both of us were interested in a variety of questions. How, um, how is history still relevant in a kind of 21st century university context and in a context of transformative uh, technology with, with digital scholarship emerging at the time? How do we continue to appeal to a 21st century student who is deeply embedded in that kind of digital culture that we are a part of? Um, and a fast moving culture that's very forward looking as well. So how do we create new ways of approaching um, historical learning that might appeal to students? So uh, we're both very interested in a kind of a student led uh, community based approach to learning. And so we uh, crafted the History Harvest project and class that we've been doing for a number of years <coughs> now that uh, brings together a circle of students in the class and we focus on a theme or a community um, and their history. And so I've done that class based, uh, focused on the African American community in North Omaha where I live. Um, I've done it on the refugee communities here in Lincoln. We've had other professors look at other communities. Uh, Professor Steinacher right now is looking at the Italian American community in, in Omaha. Uh, but the idea is to uh, bring students in, they gain historical knowledge about these communities and learn the broader, how those specific histories link to the broader history of the United States and even globally when it comes to issues of immigration uh, or enslavement, etc. Uh, they learn core historical skills. Uh, how to analyze resources uh, on, and artifacts that they collect uh, based on this, how to put those together to draw meaning out of the past and meaning that might resonate and be useful with today. We, we have lots of issues around immigration, for instance, today. Uh, so what does it mean to think about those contemporary issues in the context of previous waves of immigration to a state like Nebraska, where we've had wave after wave of, of immigration here, right? Or what does that uh, immigration and migration mean to indigenous communities that persist and remain here as well and, and we're here preceding those other communities as well. So they, they learn content, they learn um, historical uh, analytic skills, they also learn digital research skills as well, they learn how to use a camera, they learn how to re outreach to the community, connect with the media, um, they also uh, use the Omeka system which is a online archiving system so they learn how to encode metadata and things like that um, into archives and to create an archive that again like the making invisible histories visible program uh, makes those resources available to anybody that has a, a digital connection so teachers other professors students and community members um, and I think one of the interesting things about the History Harvest Project is that it really comes uh, also from a sense that uh, most history and most artifacts, most archival materials are not in a library or a museum or a formal archive, but they still remain in the hands of everyday people in the objects that they keep and maintain from over the course of their and their families' lives um, and the meanings that they ascribe to those artifacts. So in that regard, we really think of this as a, a people's history project um, and we invite then local people to come out and to share those materials and we digitize those materials and that's the, the harvesting part of this history. So we uh, go into a community, the African American community in North Omaha, the Italian American community, the refugee communities here, uh, and we invite uh, members of those communities to bring out the objects and materials or their own stories, because we, we collect oral histories as well, and to share those materials with, with us. We don't keep the materials, um, and so we digitize them. So we scan or photograph them, we record with a camera their, their interviews, um, and then we make that material available through the website that we have. That's an, an ever-expanding um, web resource as well. This model has been really popular not only with our students here at UNL, but it's been uh, influential and taken up by uh, uh, teachers, uh, professors um, at other universities around the country, both at the undergrad level, the graduate level, in education, in public history, as well as K through 12 um, uh, levels as well. That also flows into one of the uh, uh, 
projects that I'm, I'm doing currently, which is last year, we got a grant, a significant grant from the Humanities Without Walls Consortium. Um, and that grant is going to allow us um, to work with the Lincoln Public School System, we're in the process of doing this right now, um, to think about and think through what would it mean to do the History Harvest program and project at the upper elementary, the middle school, and the high school level. So this is a partnership with my colleague um, uh, Aaron Johnson, who's over in the School of Education here. We've got some graduate assistants. We're working with local teachers and the social studies expert in the Lincoln Public School um, to think about what would this mean to do this at the fifth grade level, the eighth grade level, and the 11th grade level, um, and to have a kind of succession, a, a, a curricular perspective that would think about how students could use the history harvest to to grow their understanding of history and the skills that you can get from doing historical um, uh, educational uh, work. So we're really excited about that and hope that ultimately after this kind of Lincoln model gets up and running that this could be a model that then uh, school systems, K through 12 school systems across the state of Nebraska could adopt and buy into. Um, it's really exciting in, in that regard.